Welcome to Tech Notice. This over here is the Feutech AK2000 gimbal. Now I've had this gimbal for over a month and I wanted to put this gimbal through its paces to actually try and test it on different shoots. Not just to talk about the features of the gimbal and what it can do, but actually tell you the user experience. Now, the big question still remains. Is this a bargain of a gimbal or is it a waste of money? Well, you're gonna find out. So let me start with the good sides. What do I like about this gimbal? First of all, I do like the design. I like how this gimbal is, first of all, third 45 roll axis so you can see the screen of the gimbal. And then everything, the building materials feel really, really solid and feels like well-built things. So when you, when you look at the price, you don't expect it to like kind of be like that good. So everything in your hand feels really, really good. Second of all, which probably is the biggest thing that I like about this gimbal is that you can put gimbals and balance gimbals on here that have a battery grip. So I tested this gimbal out on the Sony a6500 with a battery grip and this uh, Sigma 35 millimeter f1.4 lens, which is very front heavy. So it's quite a heavy setup and also very high in terms of the center of the gravity. I was able to balance it on here easily. I'm shooting this through the Sony a6500 at the moment. That's why it's not over here. But all the test footage that you're gonna see is shot with the Sony a6500 on this, which I like a lot. And it's because there's just a bit more room um, between the uh, pitch axis and the roll axis is further back. It's a little bit of bigger, like a angle over here, which lets you put a bit bigger cameras on there. But just remember the payload capacity is 2.72 kilograms. Next of all, third of all, what I really like about this gimbal is that the touch screen over here is super, super, super useful. So you've got the touch screen over here, just change the settings, your different follow modes, and to also adjust the payloads. Um, and then even if you connect your camera with it, you can adjust the ISO and camera settings on here. So I, I really like the idea and I think this is one of the first gimbals out there that I've really put like a big screen on the gimbal where you can touch screen, like use the gimbal, gimbal's touch screen, which is really, really, really cool. Can I say really, really how many times? Anyway, I really like that, the touch screen feature big thumbs up from me. Fourth of all, this back trigger button over here is customizable, which means that you can decide what you want this button to do. My case, I put this on all locker mode. So even if I'm on full follow mode, when I'm pressing the trigger, it's gonna go to all lock follow mode, which means all the axes are locked and it's just gonna keep the camera face to whatever angle I'm pointing it. So I can move towards it or point pull out with absolutely smoothest kind of movement, so I like that about that. The fifth good side that I like about this is how easy it is to upgrade the software on the gimbal. All you have to do is connect it to your phone, it connects through Bluetooth, make sure your phone has got either Wi-Fi or mobile data to download the software like that it needs to transfer to the gimbal and then just update it super easy. You don't have to connect to a computer or be limited to a Wi-Fi connection. Absolutely love it, it was so easy to do. In fact, it's been the easiest gimbal software upgrade I've ever done. And last of all, the good side, what I like about this is that it keeps the horizon really, really well. When shooting with the gimbal, the horizon never went off for me, which is just absolutely amazing. I hate when the horizon slowly drifts off on your gimbal. It's just, oh, it's just so annoying, but it never happened for me on this gimbal. Now let's go to the bad sides. And I want to tell you also this, that um, I could have released the review much earlier, but I wanted to work through these bad sides as well and made sure that this is not just my fault of me misusing the gimbal, but these are actually things that are maybe not so good about the gimbal. So I've been in contact with the customer service as well, trying to see if there is any other way, but you know, apparently there isn't. So all these bad sides kind of are the sides that I'm honest about you guys. If you want to know the honest reviews, welcome to Tech Notice. Come over here. I'm going to tell you how it is, exactly how it is. So some of the sides that I don't like about this gimbal. First thing that I don't like about this gimbal is that the disc carrying case that it comes in is fixed. And what I mean by fixed is that once you've balanced your gimbal, you can't put it in here. You're going to have to undo every single axis 
and then unbalance every single access to fit it into the case. I prefer for the run and gun setup that usually these gimbals are made for, that it's made for so that I can balance the gimbal, right? Take my camera off, throw it in a bag. Next time I'm gonna take it out, I'm just gonna check the balance. Not I have to rebalance because that takes a lot of time. But there are millimeter readings of, over here on every single axis, so you can remember kind of these millimeter readings, which would speed up your balancing process, but I just prefer I could take it out of the bag, put camera on, shoot, go, boom. Second thing, what I don't like about this gimbal, which is probably the biggest thing, is the performance is, for me, is questionable. The way I would like to use the gimbal, it's not very well done for me. So first of all, I can't make the follow mode be smooth enough. Even if I'm on the smoothest setting, it still moves too fast for me. I would like to get more cinematic shots, which is much smaller, like kind of movement and smaller follow. It's not as smooth. Second of all, I found quite a lot of glitches inside how... Whoa, what was that? What was that? The um, gimbal follow works, which is probably the soft software glitch and they can improve this. But the thing is when I'm really slowly trying to a parallax move around something or like I've got a subject and moving across, when I'm moving really slowly, the gimbal goes mental and then starts to do these like little, like very sharp movements which I don't think is very good at all, completely ruins the shot. I don't think there is that much difference between the default smooth and action settings that you can choose on the gimbal. I wish the action set setting was much more action setting kind of way, and the gimbal uh, smoothest setting would be even smoother, or just at least give me an option to customize it completely, which you can't do, you're just stuck with these three options which I'm not very happy about. And now this leads to the next point which is the vibrations and balancing of the gimbal. You have to balance the camera on this gimbal really, really well. So basically you have to kind of go for the perfect balance, otherwise you're going to get some vibrations or things like that and it's not going to work as well. I've used gimbals before where you kind of, you don't have to get it completely perfect, it's still, still going to kind of work through that. But in this one, you have to be very, very good with the balancing. And even when it was balanced, I still had some vibrations. And to be honest, I don't know where they came from. The camera is perfectly balanced. I can point it whatever direction. And I've got um, the payload setting put to a perfect one as well. So it's not too much. If I go any lower, it starts to sway, which I know that um, actually they, there's not enough power on the motors, so it's, I still couldn't get it work, okay? So uh, I'm not really happy in terms of the vibrations because it's probably gonna affect the uh, footage on the gimbal. So basically balancing and the vibrations, you're just gonna have to work through that. So now I already mentioned the payload, but also when you want to ch uh, choose the right payload for your mo uh, like camera, it's not very clear how to do that and I tried to find it on the instructions that I only found it like kind of figured out how to do it if I contacted the customer service which is not very good way of figuring out how to use your gimbal. So basically uh, I'm gonna just spare you the find and actually how you do that is it's too much if your camera is on and you've got the vibrations and it's too little or too small of the power if the camera is on and it starts to sway slowly a little bit because there's not enough power. So you have to kind of find this awesome balance between both of these. There's not too much vibrations and not too low. I wish there was some kind of like a either gauge where you could put actual weight of the camera on so you can just check out how much is your camera body, how much is the lens and kind of use it that way. Also, they've added an auto setting for the payload to figure out what payload you should be using, which doesn't work at all. It just keeps the vibrating. They said it should only change when after five seconds it figures out and the vibration should stop, but it just kept vibrating for me for ages. So I don't know, that didn't work very well. The wheel on this side is really cool function and really good addition but I don't think it's calibrated very well because if you go and try to shoot and for example use the wheel to get your pitch up or pitch down it's very hard to gauge how it works and it's not very natural movement 
shall I say. And some of the things where you want the wheel to work really fast, it doesn't work fast enough, which is odd as well. I just think it could do a little bit more of software improvement. Okay, last of all of the bad sides, what I think is the quick release plate is a little bit odd. So basically, it says to mount the camera on the higher bit of the quick release plate, but if I put it on there, uh, I can't balance my gimbal because it's, it's too mental. So I'm gonna have to balance it on the other side, but once I've balanced on the other side, the lens support doesn't work because the lens is actually too high. So I wish there was either a longer lens support that comes with it, which I can, you know, um, oh, I shouldn't do that, but it's the lens support, if you know what I mean, you know, there's lens on top and it, it kind of like, you know, supports the lens anyway. And another thing that I prefer the actual knobs where you can twist and tighten it rather than this like a quick release, like a Manfrotto style uh, release over here on the side, which actually sometimes when I'm tightening this, I've already moved the camera out of balance when, when I'm tightening like this, which isn't very perfect. So it, I just prefer the knobs. So I don't think that's very good. Every single time I've tried to put my camera on it, it almost doesn't go in, so I have to be very perfectly aligned with like the hole to to mount the quick release plate inside the quick release uh, bottom, which is a little bit odd as well. I just think it just needs a little bit fine tuning. So now I've rambled on quite a lot about this gimbal, good sides, bad sides, and you think, wow, there's so many bad sides, do you still recommend the gimbal? And you're probably thinking no, but actually I do for certain people. So I think this gimbal here is for people who want to start in learning how to use a gimbal and want to uh, start their kind of, you know, cool cinematic movements and want to learn how to get these moving shots and how to use a gimbal. Because a lot of the bad sides, you can still kind of work through that. And if you look at the price, the price is absolutely amazing for something like that. And you're not restricted what camera you're gonna put in here, so you can use it for a very long time. And it's just really good for people who want to learn and are beginners maybe, who want to you know get their first gimbal. But I don't re recommend this gimbal for anyone who's doing any paid work because it's just not quite reliable on it. And it's quite hard for me to say that because I'm looking online a lot of reviews the reviewers are saying that oh this is this is you know very good and things like that but for some reason it's not for me that I'm taking it out of the box putting camera on and using it no you have to really really work through some things that are quite annoying for me which I hope if you are you know working on as a professional videographer or you're getting paid for your video work I think you understand what I'm saying over here. So I wouldn't recommend this if you're getting paid for any of your video work. But if you're a beginner, I think it's a very good option for you. If you're a beginner and you want to check it out, I'm going to leave a link in the description. Anyway, I hope you guys liked my honest review about this AK2000 Kimball by Feyetech. And uh, if you have any other questions, leave a comment below. I'm gonna answer these comments. I'm gonna meet you in the comment section below. Anyway, if you like the video, hit that like button. If you didn't, feel free to hit that dislike button twice. Remember to subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks guys for watching. Adios. If you found it helpful, hit that like sub, like sub, wow. Hey, remember to subscribe.